Okay, here we go. Example time. Now, what I've done is I gave us the most common integrals in a table right here. So make sure that you take a second and you write them down and you organize them the same way I have them. So you have polynomials at the top, trig functions in the middle, and then the exponential at the very bottom. This is nothing more than just matching them up and applying that property. And it's actually pretty easy once you get a handle of this. Um, the biggest speed bump that we're going to hit is you got to know You got to know your algebra. You got to have really good algebra skills because at a lot of the times, um, the problems just aren't that nice and they don't, they're, they're not written in a form that we can easily just put them into one of these uh, properties that I have listed here in these common integrals. So you're going to have to rewrite something. Okay. So what I want to do here is just go ahead and just do, um, I don't know, a couple examples, not a couple, I'm going to do more than a couple, obviously, but I'm going to do, I'm going to do some examples and I'm going to just show you how we find integrals and it's actually very easy, but you got to know your algebra. All right, so here's our first one. So we're going to evaluate. The following integrals. So here's the first. We're going to evaluate from zero to two of three X squared plus 2x dx. All right. So here we're going to use the power rule. So we get 3x to the third times 3 plus 2 times x to the second over 2, evaluated between 0 and 2. All right. Now, if I went a little bit fast there, I want you to think about what just happened. Okay. In fact, why don't I just do this? I think this is better. I'm not going to do this for every single problem, but I'll do it for this very first one. So let me, let me just go ahead and erase this. All right. Here, here's what I did. I, I did this so fast in my head and I'm very sorry for this. Here's what I did. I took this integral symbol and I distributed it to each one of these different functions of X. All right. So I got the integral from 0 to 2 of 3x squared dx plus the integral from 0 to 2 of 2x dx. Then I took each one of these constants. So let me underline them real quick. And I'm going to move it out front for each of them. So now when I rewrite this, I get 3 times the integral from 0 to 2 of x squared dx plus... 2 times the integral from 0 to 2 of x dx. So now what I can do is go ahead and apply my power rule. Now watch what happens here. For the first, and I'm going to come directly underneath. I get 3 times. Now the integral of x to the second is going to be x to the third over 3. I need to evaluate this between 0 and 2. Plus... 2 times the integral, while the integral of x to the first is going to be x to the second over 2. And I need to evaluate that between 0 and 2. So now, if I just move over to the right and simplify a little bit, I'm going to get the 3's reduce. So I get x to the third evaluated between 0 and 2 plus x to the second evaluated between zero and two as well. All right. So earlier when I, when I wrote, and I'm going to come all the way back up here. When I wrote three X to the three over three plus two X to the two over two evaluated between zero and two, I did all these steps and one and, and just, just one hit. <laughs> like, like it was that, it was that simple. And, and you'll see this with practice and the better you get with it. Okay. So let's go ahead. Let's finish this problem. So what I'm going to do is we'll do this one first. So I need to evaluate X to the third between zero and two. So put a two, put a zero, and that's going to give me eight. Plus, 
I'm going to do the same thing here now for x squared. So this is going to be 2 and 0. And you get 4, and 8 plus 4 is 12. So remember, your upper limit minus your lower limit for each of them. Now, as you can see, if I keep doing uh, this method over and over again, once these problems get a little complex, you're going to be writing a lot. So it's best to kind of just write less, but think more. I know, I know that's it's really not fair to say when you're learning this, but it, it, it really helps out in terms of writing everything. Um, let's go ahead. Let's do another example that's similar to this, except we're going to go. We're going to have to go ahead and do some algebra now to rewrite something. So here's the problem I want to look at. So this is problem two. So we're going to evaluate the integral from 0 to 1 of x plus the square root of x dx. Okay, now here what we're going to want to do is I'm going to go ahead and distribute the uh, integral sign and the dx again like I did in the previous problem. Just to keep it nice and simple so you can see how all this works out. All right, so 0 to 1, square root of x dx. All right, now here's where the uh, our algebra skills need to kick in, okay? The first integral from 0 to 1 of x dx, that's that's the easy one, all right? It's, it's the second one that we have to do. So what I'm going to do is just rewrite the problem. And instead of writing the square root of x, just like in derivatives, we're going to change this to x to the 1 half power. And now we can go ahead and apply the power rule. So right here off to the left, uh, the integral of x is going to be 1 half x squared. I'm going to evaluate that between 0 and 1. Plus, now the integral of x to the 1 half is x to the 1 half over 1 half. Okay. Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Hold on, hold on. Don't, don't write that. It's x to the 3 halves over three halves evaluated between zero and one, which give me one sec is really two times X to the three over two over three evaluated between zero and one. Now, before I move any further, I want to show you how I got that. Okay. So off to the right, here's my X to the one half. Now we know what we're going to have to do here is when we take the integral, we add 1, and then we divide by that. Now, I'm just really clever on how I wrote the number 1. I wrote it as 2 over 2. So notice that's going to give me x to the 3 over 2 over 3 over 2. And that x to the 3 over 2, and I'm really writing all of these little steps out because I really want you to see it. The x to the 3 over 2 is really x to the 3 over 2 over 1 and all of this is over 3 over 2 and the reason why I'm writing this is because hopefully you can see we have a fraction divided by a fraction which is going to be the first fraction multiplied by the reciprocal of the second fraction and that is how I got 2 over 3 x to the 3 halves power okay so 2 over 3 x to the 3 halves power, or I just wrote it as 2x to the 3 halves all over 3, okay? So I hope you see how that worked. Now what we can do from here is we can go ahead and just simplify what we have. So it's best to kind of just separate this. Notice it's a lot of writing. So what I'm going to do is just break this down into uh, something more manageable. So I'm only going to do the first part here. So 1 half times x squared minus one half times x squared. But remember, we need to evaluate this with the upper limit minus the lower limit. Okay, so this is just going to turn out to be one half and I'll put a little square around that. Now we're going to do the second part here. So this is going to be so here what we're going to do is I'm going to write two over three the 3 halves power and put a 1 minus 2 over 3 times 0 to the 3 halves power. Oh, sorry for the little typo there. 
All right, so one to the three halves power is still one. Uh, zero to the three half power is zero. So this entire part right here goes to zero, which is fantastic. So this is just gonna turn out to be two thirds. And now if you go all the way back to the beginning of the problem, you scroll up here a little bit, remember, and I'm gonna highlight here, we were adding these two integrals together. So when I come down here in red, I'm going to write 1 half plus 2 over 3. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to get out my calculator because I'm lazy. And that gives me 7 over 6. Okay? Now, every single problem from here on out is basically done the same way. You want to take it, before you do anything, you take a step back. You look at what you're given and you say, okay, can I apply one of those rules, those properties from above? So let me scroll back up here. You know, here they are right here. All right. If not, if you can't just immediately go into one of these, algebra, that, that is going to be your foundation for this. Okay. Um, let's go ahead. We're, I'm going to do a, another very easy problem here. All right. So here's another example. We're gonna find the integral from zero to the natural log of eight of e to the x dx. Now, this is by far the easiest problem. And it's because above the integral of e to the u du equals e to the u plus some arbitrary constant if this was an indefinite integral. We have a definite integral. We're going from zero to the natural log of eight. So Really, the only thing we're concerned with is just the integral of e to the u, which is e to the u. So, for our problem, this is going to be e to the x evaluated between 0 and the natural log of 8, which equals e to the ln of 8 minus e to the 0. Now, according, according to our properties of exponentials and logs, e to the ln of 8 reduces into the number 8. e to the 0 is 1. So the integral from 0 to the natural log of 8 of e to the x dx is equal to 7. Okay? So from here, now I'm just going to go ahead and just do a couple more examples. I'm going to just speed up a little bit. I'm not going to write, like in the previous problem, all these like little intermediate steps, all right? Because it gets very tedious. So here's another problem here. The integral from 0 to 4 of t times t minus 2 times t minus 4 dt. Okay? Now, with a situation like this, um, notice I cannot use the power rule exactly how it looks. All these, although I have different functions of t, they're all being multiplied. Okay? That power rule says you have one function of t or one function of x raised to an exponent, and I don't have that here. But what I do have is I can expand this. I can go ahead and distribute the t and the t minus 2 to the quantity t minus 4 and figure out what that is. And then I can apply the, uh, the power rule for each one of them. So I get the integral from 0 to 4 of, after I distribute everything, I get t to the third minus 6t to the second plus 8t. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to integrate each one of these terms. So t to the third, well, that's going to be 1 fourth t to the fourth minus t to the second integrates into 6 over 3 t to the third plus 8t integrates into 8 over 2 t to the second. Before I write anything else, I'm going to do a little bit of simplifying. So I get 1 fourth t to the fourth minus 2 t to the, or t to the third plus 4 t to the second. And I need to evaluate this between 0 and 4. Now my upper limit is going to be 1 fourth times 4 to the fourth minus 2 times 4 to the third plus 4 times 4 to the second 
minus my lower limit. But since each term, oops, sorry about that. Since each term has, has a T involved, and I know I need to substitute in my lower limit, which is a zero, I'm gonna be subtracting zero away because zero times anything is just zero. So the only thing I really gotta be worried about here is just simplifying the first part right here. All right, so when I simplify this, I get four to the third minus two times four to the third plus four times, or I'm sorry, four times four to the second is gonna be four to the third. All I'm doing here is just applying rules for exponents to try to make my, my life a little bit easier in terms of figuring this out. Because like four to the fourth power is a large number, um, but four to the third power is 64 minus two times 64 plus 64, 64 plus 64, is 128 minus 128, and this equals zero. All right, so let's go, let's do another one here. All right, so let's try this one. We're gonna go from the integral from negative two to negative one of x to the negative three dx. Well, this is pretty straightforward. So remember, power rule, I'm gonna add one to the power and divide by it. So negative three plus one is negative two and then divide by negative two. And we're gonna evaluate this between negative two and negative one. So here's my upper limit, here's my lower limit. So my upper is gonna be, now I'm gonna rewrite this here a little bit as negative one half x to the second power, because I don't like that negative exponent. So this is gonna be negative one over two times negative one squared. So there's my upper limit minus my lower limit, which is gonna be negative one half negative two to the second power. So I get negative one half plus, well, you gotta be careful here. Negative two to the second power is positive four and four times two is gonna be eight. So negative one half plus one eighth equals negative three eighths. Okay, next problem. How about the integral from zero to one of one minus the sine of x times dx. Well, once again, we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna apply our power rule and the trig rule for sine. So this is gonna equal x minus, now if you go, if you go, uh, if you scroll all the way back, well, I'm gonna scroll all the way back up. The integral of sine, so let me go all the way back up here real quick, sorry. The integral of sine is negative cosine, so minus negative cosine of x, evaluated in between zero and one. I'm gonna clean this up by saying x plus cosine of x, <coughs> evaluated between zero and one. And now we're just gonna go ahead and figure this out. So my upper limit minus my lower limit, this is gonna be one plus the cosine of one, minus zero plus the cosine of zero. So that's gonna give me one plus the, oh, plus the cosine of one minus the cosine of zero. And if you recall, the cosine of zero is one, and one minus one is zero, so this is just nothing more than the cosine of one, okay? All right, let's do a couple more here. Do a couple more. How about the integral from zero to pi over three of secant x tangent x 
DX. <coughs> Excuse me. Once again, you're going to have to go ahead, go back to your tables. So let's see, secant x tan, tan x. The integral of secant x tangent x is right here. So it's going to be secant u, or in this case, this is just going to be equal to secant x evaluated between 0 and pi over 3. So the secant of pi over 3 minus the secant of 0. So the secant of pi over 3 is 2. The secant of 0 is 1. So this equals 1. All right, let's do another one. Let's do the integral uh, of, or I'm sorry, integral from 1 to 2 of 2s squared minus 4 all over s to the third power ds. So this is going to equal. Now, before I do any math or before I do any calculus, I need to do algebra here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify. Notice. I have s to the third power in my denominator. It is a monomial, which means I can divide everything by that. So I'm going to separate it first. And then I'm going to go ahead and simplify. So this is going to give me 2 over s minus 4 over s to the third power ds. Okay? Now from here, I'm going to go ahead and I need to integrate. So I'm going to rewrite it one last time. I'm going to leave this as 2 over s. You'll see why in a second. Minus 4s to the negative 3 ds. Okay, now there is one rule that I didn't really, I didn't list on here. The integral of 1 over u du is equal to the natural log of u, okay? So this one I was kind of saving for uh, next uh, next chat or next section, but we arrived, at, we arrived at this problem, so I might as well just give it to you. So the integral of 1 over u du equals the natural log of u. Now, if you look at what we have above here, I actually have that. See, that, that 2 over s, I can rewrite that as 2 times 1 over s. So when I go ahead and take this integral, all right, I'm going to get 2 times the ln of the absolute value of s plus, now this you got to be careful. Actually, you'll see where the plus comes in in a second. Minus 4 s to the negative 4 over negative 4 evaluated in between 1 and 2. Now, once again, I said you'll see where that plus sign comes in. I'm going to simplify a little bit. So I get the 2 ln of s plus s to the negative 4 because the negative 4 over negative 4 reduced to positive 1. All right. Now, if you wanted to, you can rewrite s to the negative 4 as 1 over s to the 4th, and that's fine by me. But now we need to evaluate this between 1 and 2. So that's going to give me 2 times the ln of 2 plus 1 over 2 to the 4th. There's my upper limit minus my lower limit. 2 times the ln of 1 plus 1 over 1 to the 4th. There's my lower limit. For my upper limit, I'm going to get 2 ln of 2 plus 1 16th minus, well, the ln of 1 is 0. 2 times 0 is 0. So this is just going to be minus 1 over 1, or just frankly, 1. And just to clean this up a little bit more, I'm going to rewrite 1 as 16 over 16. So this is nothing more than just 2 ln of 2 
minus 15 over 16. Oh, you're going to have to excuse me. Hopefully you were watching the video and you're like, uh-oh, uh-oh, he made a mistake. My mistake, I'm going to highlight it real quick, is right here. That, there's my mistake right there. So I'm going to have to just redo this. I'm sorry, but it is a mistake. All right, let's fix let's fix my mistake here. So when I integrate, I still get two. I still get two. Oh, I hate that pen. I still get two ln of s. But here's my mistake. I I for some reason I took a derivative. This is going to be minus for s to the negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2 over negative 2. And this simplifies down into 2 ln of s plus 2 over s squared. And there was my mistake right there. For some reason, and, and you're trust me, you're going to do that a bunch. Um, you're going to take a derivative when you should be integrating. And it's because you're learning how to do this and everything. And I need to evaluate this between 1 and 2. So that's going to give me 2 ln of 2 plus 2 over 2 squared. There's my upper limit. Minus my lower limit, 2 ln of 1 plus 2 over 1 to the second. So this is going to be 2... ln of 2 plus, well, if you wanted to, you can go ahead and do this, but I'm just going to go ahead and use my rules for exponents. Uh, so this is going to give me 1 half minus 2 times the ln of 1. Well, that's going to be 0 plus 2. So 2 ln of 2 plus 1 half minus 2 which reduces down into 2 ln of 2 minus 3 over 2. So sorry about that little mistake. It happens to the best of us. Uh, my, my, when that happens, I do not allow myself to get frustrated. I just erase it and just do it again. Not a big deal. All right. <coughs> uh, let's see here. Two more problems. I'll do two more examples. We'll call it a day. Now, this one initially looks a little weird. But it's actually very, very simple. All right, so we got the integral from 0 to 1. Of 10 times e to the x plus 3 dx. Okay, now. What I'm going to do here. Is I'm going to say, well, this. It, it, it kind of looks like. the integral of e to the u du. This, this 10, I can move out front, all right? Like, I'm not concerned at all with that 10. What I'm really concerned with is the e to the x plus 3 dx. So this kind of looks like e to the u, all right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make what we call a substitution... And I'm going to say, I'm going to let u equal x plus 3. Okay? Now, I'm going to tell you right now, that's completely valid for this specific problem. In section 5, we're going to learn what this technique is actually called. It's called u substitution. And I'm going to, I'm going to explain in section 5 why we are allowed to do this. Okay? So, since this kind of looks like um, you know, e to the u, I'm going to make the u substitution. I know the integral of e to the u is going to be e to the u again. However, u, remember, was x plus 3. So we're just going to evaluate this between 0 and 1. So 
I said this one kind of looks weird, but it's actually really easy. Well, that's because it, it is really easy. You just got to be able to recognize what you have. All right. And that just comes with practice. That's it. Like there's nothing else I can tell you about that. It just comes with practice and it will come provided you practice. So let's go ahead. Let's, let's simplify this. So I get 10 E to the one plus three for my upper limit minus 10 E to the zero plus three for my uh, lower limit. That's going to give me 10 e to the 4 minus 10 e to the 3. And if you want to, you can leave your answer like this. Your book may say something along the lines of 10 times e to the 4th minus e to the 3rd for a final result. Okay? All right. <clears throat> Let's do, uh, I promise you one more or two more. So I'm going to do one more and we'll call it a day here. So this is going to be the integral. Pi over 4 to pi over 2 of cosecant squared theta d theta. Now, remember, theta is just the argument of the angle. It's just a measurement. So in order for us to do this, we're going to, go, we're going to have to use our, uh, common, our common rules. So cosecant squared is going to equal negative cotangent theta evaluated between pi over 4 and pi over 2. So, we got the negative cotangent of pi over 2 minus negative cotangent of pi over 4. <clears throat> the negative cotangent of pi over 2 is going to be 0. A negative and a negative make it plus. Cotangent of pi over 4 is going to be 1. And 0 plus 1 is 1. And that's it. So the key to doing any type of integration problem is, number one, try to fit one of the properties I gave you. Okay? So that's the first thing you're going to look at. Try to use a property. Okay, if number one fails, step two is to use algebra to simplify. Okay, now in the next section, we're going to add a step three onto this, which is use substitution. But you got to know when you can use that and when you can't. Okay, so that's going to be it for today. Uh, I will upload the next video tomorrow morning, and uh, that's going to be it for this week. So good luck.